Hi everybody, my name is Colleen. Welcome to Good Dog Grooming. Today I want to address the debate of whether ear plucking prevents or creates problems for dogs. Okay guys, so did you know that a lot of dogs have fur in their ear and a lot of groomers pluck it out when they groom the dog? This is usually done with the help of some ear powder, which helps to grip the fur, and it's usually not that difficult to do. The ear inside the ear canal is not attached as firmly as like, say, the fur on the body or on the face or anything like that, or on the outside of the ear, for example. So it always makes people think, oh, isn't that gonna hurt the dog? And usually it doesn't, especially if there's no pre-existing ear problems. Very common ear problems include ear infection, yeast, and ear mites. If any of these problems exist, the plucking of the hair is more likely to hurt or bother the dog. There is a big debate over whether plucking the hair out of the ear canal increases the risk of any of those problems manifesting or actually prevents those problems. Here's what you're gonna find if you explore online and ask on Facebook groups and various forums. Basically, I've divided this into four categories. Okay, so my example for number one, my vet said to pluck. I'm gonna go ahead and read this real comment from a Facebook thread. All I can say is that my girl had a jungle of hair in her ears and suffered from ear infections on a regular basis until our vet started to pluck her hair jungle. She has airflow as it should be and the cleanest and infection-free ears in the neighborhood. Category two, never plucked, got ear problems, started plucking, problems went away. Our guy is an F1B, that's referring to like a generation of doodle, and has a wavy slash curly coat. His ears will fill with hair and get infections if not plucked. Category number three, my vet said don't pluck. My vet said that we should get the hair cut short under the ears and trimmed from the inside of the ear, but there was no need to pluck them, shrug emoji. Category number four, used to pluck, had a bunch of ear problems, don't pluck anymore, the problems went away. Here's an example of one of those comments. My previous standard was on steroids and antibiotics numerous times. Finally, I stopped the plucking and the head shaking, tearing at his ears went away. For him, it was a great decision, never had a problem again. So the reason I read you those comments is just to demonstrate that when you read these threads, that's what you're gonna encounter for the most part Everybody has a story and what worked for them, and then they say, so therefore, do what I did. So clearly, there are, in fact, reasons for ear plucking and reasons against ear plucking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my very best to just lay out the for and against and give you something resembling a conclusion. So here goes. Reasons for ear plucking. First of all, Unless there's an underlying issue, it does not hurt them, especially if it's done right. Another reason is it allows airflow or to let the ear breathe. So when you, if there's dense fur in there, they talk about keeping moisture at bay by plucking the majority of the hair out of the ear canal. Another reason for ear plucking is that very thick and curly fur can actually mat inside the canal and when it is time to pluck that out that usually is a little bit uncomfortable for the dog so if your dog is prone to getting those mats in the ear canal which we sometimes call either an ear plug because when we pull it out it is as if this thing was plugging the ear or some groomers call it like an ear dread so regular plucking can actually prevent that now sometimes a dense jungle of fur can kind of cause a buildup or make it difficult to clean out the grease or the wax, the residue that's in there. And so that's it for easier cleaning and more thorough cleaning, plucking the fur can be good. And lastly, a reason for plucking is sometimes it's easier to administer medicine. So if medicine is needed, the, the fur could be in the way of some of that medicine reaching down into the ear canal where it needs to go. I wanna go over some risks and cons of ear plucking next. A lot of people have this experience where we never plucked, 
and then my vet or groomer or somebody plucked the ears and all of a sudden my dog had this raging ear infection. Sometimes that's because they had a small ear infection beforehand and then it really kind of took hold after everything was sort of upended. I don't know whether this is a pro or a con because you would have wanted to get rid of that minor ear infection anyways. And so again, this is a little bit of a controversy or a debate. Another potential risk is ear powder clumping inside the ear canal. And so basically this is a caution for most groomers not to overuse ear powder. I've read some groomer stories about discovering kind of clumps of sort of waxy ear powdery buildup. And that's something that you could prevent by using the ear powder sparingly and only on the kind of outer part and not like sticking the ear powder bottle in the ear and sort of like poofing it in there. All right, a couple more potential risks or cons of ear plucking. You can damage, if you're using your fingers like this to pluck the hair out from that ear canal, you can damage, you know, it's, it's really sensitive skin in there. And so even just with like long fingernails or regular fingernails, if you happen to sort of scratch in there accidentally as you're doing that plucking motion, you can kind of damage the skin. Although anytime I've ever accidentally done this to a dog, I used to do that kind of early on in my grooming a couple of times until I kind of figured out how to not accidentally scratch them. It, so it's a small risk, but it never was an intense injury. It always was like just a little ouchy and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But there is a greater risk of injury from the tools that you might use. So for trimming the fur, you might use scissors, which I advise against. So if you flip that ear open and you wanna trim the fur kind of flush to the ear canal, I never recommend scissors, but a lot of people say, I just trim it with scissors and I read that online and I'm always like, I don't think you should do that. I think you should use clippers on a 30 blade or a 40, no longer than a 10, but even 10 is for me too risky as far as like risk of cutting something because there's so many bumps and flaps that you can cut on a dog's ear. So you've got injury from scissors, injury from clippers, and injury from the hemostats, which are sort of this like pinchy tool that we sometimes grab the hair with, and you can accidentally pinch a bump or a lump kind of in the ear canal as well. And the final risk that I will list is called a hematoma, which is a pocket of blood in the ear flap, usually on the end of the ear. This can happen because of any kind of new feeling or irritation. So plucking, and the dog suddenly can kind of feel the wind in its ear canal and it makes them be like, that's so weird. And they just shake their head a lot. So if a dog has floppy ears and then shakes its head a lot over and over, the blood vessels in the ear can actually start to kind of break and this bubble of blood pools at the tip of the ear. And that's called a hematoma. An ear hematoma is called an oral hematoma. It's a difficult problem to solve because the dog wants to keep doing it and making it worse and so there's there's ways to treat it but the best thing to do is prevent it all right guys so here's my conclusion as far as best practices go in grooming plucking as the default seems to be a little bit outdated in general although not completely our worst enemy either okay some groomers in fact probably a lot still currently pluck as their default. They automatically pluck the ears as part of the grooming process. So if you particularly do not want your dog's ears plucked, I would mention that to your groomer when you drop them off. In general, the conclusion seems to be leave well enough alone. If your dog doesn't have any issues, why change what's going on? So if it gets its ears plucked and it comes out real easy and it's a nice clean look and plenty of airflow, maybe leave well enough alone. If you're not getting them plucked and there's no issues and no matting and you can see that it's not a dense jungle of fur in there and you're able to still clean kind of around that hair when you do clean the ears, then maybe leave well enough alone. So here we have yet another topic that doesn't really have a definitive answer. 
I would take it on a case-by-case -case basis and a dog-by-dog -dog basis. If you do decide to pluck your dog's ears, then I plead with you to learn how to do it safely. Eventually, I do want to do a video on how to trim the fur flush to the ear and how to pluck and how I do it and show you guys how I do that. But as for now, this video is just laying out the pros and cons. Well, was this video helpful? I feel like every so often I give you a video where it's like, here's going to be an answer to a question and it ends up being, it's up to you guys. <laughs> so I hope that that was some helpful information. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you'll consider subscribing. My name's Colleen and this is Good Dog Grooming. Thanks for watching. The real best way to keep your dog's ear canal fur free. Get a boxer.